Hey folks, welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This week's episode is brought to you by Valvoline, the original motor oil. Valvoline is America's first motor oil brand, and for 150 years they've been innovating, creating, and reinventing motor oil. From the first high mileage to the first synthetic blend to the first racing oil, they've never stopped pursuing innovation to maximize engine life. Valvoline's latest innovation, extended protection, full synthetic motor oil, provides 50% better wear protection than industry standards and is 10 times stronger against oil breakdown. Valvoline Extended Protection is specifically formulated with dual defense additive technology, combining an innovative additive boosted with a fortified detergent system. You may not think you're a severe driver, but short trips, towing, extreme temperatures, turbocharged engines or heavy loads, and spirited drives will put extra pressure on your engine. That's why you need dual defense additive technology. I love Valvoline because their racing history shows that these oils will hold up to the stresses of my daily life. They're the only motor oil with a dedicated engine lab where they can run specialized engine tests and standardized engine tests in their own facility. And they're the world's number one supplier of EV battery fluids, offering tailored products to help extend vehicle range and efficiency. And now you can get Valvoline at your local auto parts store. Ask for it by name, Extended Protection Full Synthetic Motor Oil at your local auto parts store. Thanks to Valvoline for sponsoring today's show. Also, it's time to talk to you about Squarespace. You've almost certainly heard of Squarespace, but did you know that the Smoking Tire website and uh, Westside Collector Car Storage website both run on Squarespace? Squarespace is really easy. I really like Squarespace because I am not a web designer. I know nothing about HTML or Java or any of those scripting things, the things that people get paid a lot of money to do. I don't know anything about that, but I was able to make the Westside Collector Car Storage website on Squarespace with from scratch within like a couple of hours really easy. They've got all these tools that allow you to start from nothing and end up with a fully functioning, easy to search through, uh, well laid out. It looks like professional grade when you're done with it. And you can make changes easily in real time. Anytime I have an update or a change to my website, I'm able to get in there really quick, get straight to the section I need to change, change it, and then boom, it's already done. I don't have to pay someone to do it. That's that's really the difference. The difference with Squarespace is you don't have to really know anything about web design and you don't have to do any like separate tutorials like the the learning how to make a website and the making of the website happen at the same time on Squarespace. Like most people don't need like crazy animations and stuff like they just need well laid out, easy to navigate, professional looking with your photography, your information. And they've got these like widgets that bring in like your Google Maps or a contact us box or videos like media. And you can just plop that stuff in, move it around and lay it out super, super easily. Whether your website's about cars or food or business or sharing photography or whatever, your uh, your resume, you know, your uh, your uh, a portfolio for your artwork. It's all super, super easy with Squarespace. So head to squarespace.com slash tire for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash tire to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I didn't even mention that. You can you can actually use Squarespace to buy the domain itself, not just to, to, to make the website. So you can start from zero no domain, no website, and then by the time you're done at Squarespace, you've got both. So go to squarespace.com slash tire to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain and get a free trial for uh, web designing. We're also brought to you today by Policy Genius. It's the end of the year, start of a new year, actually, by the time you're hearing this, and you don't want to start your new year unprepared 
protected. You want to be protected. And Policy Genius can easily help you find home and auto coverage similar to what you have now, but at a lower price. Don't start the year by wasting money. You can bundle your home and auto insurance and save with Policy Genius. At the beginning of the year, they might be up for renewal anyway. Let Policy Genius look for a lower rate for you by comparing top insurers from Progressive to Allstate. All you've got to do is click the link in the description or head over to policygenius.com. Answer a few questions about yourself and your property. Then Policy Genius will show you price estimates for policies that fit your search and help you understand your options. The Policy Genius team can look for ways to save you more money. And if they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they will switch you over for free. Policy Genius has saved customers an average of $1,250 per per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance, which is a lot of money. Think of what you could do for $1,250 a year extra in your pocket. Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies, so you can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you at every step until you're covered. They don't add extra fees. They don't sell your intro to third part info to third parties. And they've got thousands of five-star reviews across Google and Trustpilot. So head over to policygenius.com to get your free home and auto insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Last but certainly not yeast, yeast, last but certainly not least, start the year off fresh. Ha, see what I did there? Because HelloFresh is fresh, and they are making home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why they're America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh rules, you guys. Here's why they rule. They deliver pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm-fresh produce that arrives within a week, and you get convenience without skipping on quality. You don't have to go to the grocery store. Right, Your groceries are already at home. Save the weight on the lines. Don't waste money on excess food. That's the other thing I like. When I'm cooking for just me and the wife, I often have to buy more food than I need. I only need to cook for two, but I, the thing comes in a big bundle, and I don't want to do that. Right? I don't want to waste food and throw it away. I especially hate wasting spices. Sometimes you need the spice for this recipe, but I need to buy like it only comes in like a year supply. But it'll go bad by the time I need it the next time. And it's just ridiculous. you got to spend like eight bucks on this spice that you're only going to use once a year. It stinks. HelloFresh doesn't do that. They give you pre-portioned produce, pre-portioned meats, pre-portioned spice packets, so you don't have any food waste. It's great. And don't even forget about dessert. You can satisfy your sweet tooth with seasonal, limited-time goodies like Dunkaroos cookie dough or vanilla delight cheesecake. HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality, and you can save on average over 65 bucks a month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's more money to put towards those other 2022 goals of yours. They offer 50 menu and market items from each to choose from each week, including veg, vegetarian, calorie smart, family friendly, and gourmet options with lots of variety. And they offer the flexibility to easily customize your order online or in the app. You can change your delivery day, your food preferences, your plan size, or skip a week whenever you want to if you're going out of town. And I, I just... I love it because of all these things they say, but also because it inspires me to make new things. I get caught in the ruts of cooking the same stuff kind of over and over, things I can cook from memory, things I don't have to think about a recipe, and HelloFresh inspires me because I know I don't have to like find a recipe and then go to the store and then buy all this extra stuff. They just, everything will already be at my house. So I can just pull up that recipe card that they give me and just get to it and I can have dinner ready in 45 minutes even if I've never made this dish before. So go to HelloFresh.com slash smoking tire 16 the number 16 and use code smoking tire 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts right so you got to go to the website and then also use the code hellofresh.com slash smoking tire 16 and then use code smoking tire 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts 
HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit for a reason, folks. All right, today's episode is coming to you from the house of Musto. Mike Musto is uh, one of my oldest car friends, member of the New York Motor Club, started by me and Larry in 2006. He is an automotive journalist. He works for Hemmings. He has had a variety of insane uh, muscle cars, European cars. He's always buying weird stuff. Uh, I'm recording this intro before I go see him, so I have absolutely no idea what we're going to be talking about, but we will probably be drinking tequila, so it might get loud. Mike Musto of Hemmings on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Two like boxes of, of rubber, rubber gloves. gloves. Are you sure? <laughs> Maybe it was. Did you click two and it was just literally two? Because <laughs> that no, would be amazing. I, if if I just paid forty five dollars for two <laughs> for two rubber gloves. Was what that an Amazon thing? Annoyed. Thank you for this bubbly. Yeah, man. <laughs> Coming to you. Uh, well, I want. I don't. N- not live. We're we are not live at all. No. Uh, we are. Uh, we're in Mike Musto's office up here uh, outside of San Francisco today. Mm-hmm. I just drove uh, 400 miles. 400 miles in the Audi S3. Yeah. How was that? Mostly good, except for the 90 minutes in the middle where the radar cruise control freaked out. That's what you want. That's German engineering. I just don't. I mean, well, it's weird. I don't. Something must have happened with the front sensor because it said, uh, um, you know, front collision warning on. Uh, yeah, uh, front collision warning error. Park park sensing error, yeah. radar cruise error. Yeah, and I emailed Audi, and they said, okay, well, when you get to where you're going, take the battery off for 20 minutes and do a hard reset. But then, like an hour later, it just kicked back on. It just came back on. Cured itself. It just fixed itself. So, like, I mean, when we're done with this show, we could take the battery off for 20 minutes. We should, and just we probably just should, reset. but like, I don't know. That's weird. It fixed itself. Yeah, I mean, goes to the machine type of thing. I guess I don't know. Other than that, did you fix little that car? car? Yeah, so whoever designed the driver's compartment of that car... Big, big person. Well, someone made it a priority that the front seat needs to have as much room as the, the bigger cars. Okay, well, that's, so good. Like, that's good. If I move the front seat like all the way back, yeah. I almost can't touch the pedals. Oh, really? So yeah. it's that much? Oh, you that's won't, not bad. You won't fit someone behind me. Yeah, but that's fine. But it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's, as far as like a small car for a tall person, yeah. it's excellent. So is that... That S3, is that the size of the original A4? Of the B5. Yes. Yeah, it's the size of the B5. Okay, so that's but not this, bad. But with more leg room. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know about you, because you have, like, giant-ass cars. Yeah. But, like, I love that size car. Like, the compact luxury sedan size car. Like, my E46 BMW. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Perfect size. Yeah. That, that Audi... Love it. Perfect size. Have, have you ever driven our 5 Series? From like 1980... From 79? Yeah, 79? like E28 5 Series. E12. Right? Oh, it was even before that. the first 5 Series. I've not driven a 12. I've driven a I've driven a you, E28 M5, and I, since, and I think that is about as good as it gets. Since you're here, you yeah. should drive the E12. Sure. Because it's smaller than the E28. It's tiny. But does it have room inside? I... Uh, Kind of. I'm a little cramped. Like when I put my seat back, like I'm comfortable. Yeah. But like if I turn so you're my head like t- this, you're six I'm, five, right? I'm six four. Yeah. You're six so four, like yeah. I go like this, and I'm looking at the back window. Right. Well, the size of the doors can it's come it's into tiny, play. Yeah. But like the, when I did the E28 M5, oh, it's brilliant. It was really nice and yeah. spacious. Now, yeah. granted, the doors are about two inches thick. You know. Oh yeah. God help it's you. A death trap. Crash. Yeah. But that's not that notwithstanding. So here we are. It's mm-hmm. January third. It is New Year, which is unbelievable to me, dude. Were you why? Just because it's just. It I, seems I, like twenty twenty one didn't happen. To, that's exactly the problem. If it, like we went through twenty twenty and everybody was like anxiety, anxiety, stay home, do nothing. Twenty twenty one, we got a marginal reprieve where everybody yeah. was like, we're gonna come out of it, and then they were like, just kidding. Yeah. And now we went right back into it. Yeah. And it's like it's one of those things where. It's like you're swimming in a pool and you're almost at the surface uh-huh. and then something grabs you and sucks you back yeah. down and you're like, son of a bitch. Yeah. And that's what that's what everybody's doing. So now, and I think it's even more prevalent where if somebody's like, <laughs> everybody's like, oh, dude. Omicron. Oh, and you're dude. like, oh, fuck. Uh, it's the worst. Like, I, ah, I'm... Have you, ever, have you been on a flight? Yeah, I went to New York. Someone cough on a fucking flight? You oh, should yeah. lose your mind? Everybody's just like, oh. Yeah, you fucking freak yeah. out, right? We took tests before we got on the flight when we were in New York. 
before we got on the flight coming home. Oh yeah. When we got home. Yeah. And it's and that's. It's just what you're doing. Bro, uh, you're the only person I'm seeing on this trip other than Jason Camisa, and I got Tess. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not going to a restaurant. I'm not doing anything. Right. And right. I brought Tess. I, I'm lucky to have Tess. I'm, like, privileged if to you have can, Tess. When we... It was interesting. Asia bought Tess for... My wife bought Tess for her office, and she went in and bought a whole bunch of them. And I was like, just buy all of them. Yeah. Like, don't think. Just scoop them up. Yeah. And bring them home. And we've used all of them. Yeah. Because that's what you do, because you physically can't get it. I feel like lucky I had to buy, in order to get tests, I had to buy 60. They wouldn't sell me, nobody would sell you two. But I mean, that's Even sounds, online. But that sounds like a lot. No, but, it's not that much. I know. But no, you're well, going to use 60 them. pairs. Each one of those has two. So it's 60 boxes of two. So 120, 120 tests. But they expire in March. Oh, you'll so you'll, well. I have to use them. If yeah. I don't use them, I lose them. Right. You know what I mean. Yeah. So if it's 120 tests to March, right? Yeah. You got about 120 days. That's correct. So my wife and I, our strategy, because we we've been doing nothing together, yeah. or most mostly nothing, yeah. is you know if one of us has it, the other one's done. absolutely. So we alternate. That's correct. Every every day we alternate. Yeah. So and I, I, she did one this morning. Okay. So we're good. You'll do one today or tomorrow. I'll do one. I didn't feel like I needed to do one in you between this We're morning here. and here. I've seen. I've been in the car all day by myself. I've that's seen true. nobody. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, but it's but it is incredibly stressful. Yeah, yeah. It did it well, and I think everyone. It was interesting when we went to Christmas, like we saw my family, and I haven't seen my family in a long time. And one of the people that one of the persons that was there called us was with us on Christmas Eve. Called us on Christmas City, tested positive. Called us the day, so we canceled Christmas. Yeah, we canceled. We was like no Christmas for anybody. And my family just stayed in the house. He called us the next day and said, false positive. Oh, really? And we were like, son of a bitch. But you, but you do. But you're on super high alert. You're on alert. So yeah. you don't, you call everybody and say, listen, this is, we were exposed. We think we were exposed. And everybody said, okay, well, we're just going to back out of Christmas. Yeah. And you go, okay. And that's, it's just what you do because you have to. Yeah. It's just, you know, and I think there are people that. It's been a series of canceled things. The whole, well, that's why 2021 went so fast. Because everything that we hope to do is yeah. canceled. Yeah. Everything we hope to do is canceled. Basically. We're going to do this. No, you're not. You're At least this. they still uh, are bringing us cars to drive. So we have cars to drive. So that that, that's true. that hasn't been canceled. Well, it's it's I'm like I'm still looking for cars to buy. Like, I bought five cars in 2020, in 2021. Well, it's, did you? Yeah. Bought did the market, did the, did it, it's it's not a great time to buy cars the worst right time. now. I, I can't. So I bought four or five cars and sold four or five cars. And now, the, even the shittiest of the shitty car yeah. is worth, th- or people are trying to get three times what it's worth. And you're like, I am not paying ten grand for that two hundred and thirty-eight thousand mile ship box that yeah. you want to sell. Yeah, and it's it's gotten to the point where there literally are no deals. And it was interesting. My my parents have a Toyota Highlander. They had one. They had leased. And my father and my dad was like, yeah, the lease is up. And I go, what's the buyout on that, dad? Yeah. And he said, well, the buyout's like 26 grand. I go, buy it buy. immediately. Yeah. And he goes, why? And I go, watch this. Yeah. <laughs> we typed in Carvana and we yeah. went there. $38,000. Yeah. Back. Well, we just had, we just talked to Doug DeMuro and we were talking about how like the RAV4 Prime yeah. has like a mad <laughs> ADM on it. You know, and it's like, nothing wrong with a RAV4 no, Prime. No, it's fine. But it's a full on whatever mobile. That's right. It's the most whatever, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, and like instantly forgettable. Yeah. In every way. And uh the idea that somebody would pay ADM, it's not like like all right, I get it. You you want to charge f- over for a GT three fine where the dealer gets two allocations a, a year or yeah. three. I get it. Yeah. All right, you know, it's a, it sucks. You know, I get it. What the Ford dealer up the road from me where I service the the Mach E, yeah, you know, their Raptors, Broncos, and Shelby's are like the most eye rolling ADM. Are they like forty grand over? Like for a Raptor, for a, a, a a Bronco is like thirty five over. That's nice. A, That's a Shelby nice. is a, a five hundred. A GT five hundred is thirty over. Raptors are like thirty. It's it's ridiculous. And, but but you know, on the other hand, people keep paying it. It's not like they're. It's no. not like they're sitting on a hundred cars. No, but they're asking taking, thirty over. They, they're they paying pay. it, but they're doing eighty four hundred twenty month loans to Maybe. pay for a thirty five thousand dollar car. Do you think that is that happening? Are oh. the same people doing that? The same people are paying 
the crazy ADM on an 84 month finance? Without question. You think so? Not a doubt in my mind. And I that, always assume these are opposite ends of the spectrum yeah, where there's a there's a, a cash a, not a maybe not a cash buyer but an I want it now buyer who who is more well off yeah. who will pay that ADM yeah and then you have the 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 system you know not taking advantage well maybe taking advantage of people who want a nicer car but just can't afford it right. and are and are going for the eighty four month. But I, I never I never mentally see those being the same people. In a sense, I think they are, but just in different income brackets, right? Mm-hmm. I think that if, if you go in and a RAV4 has a $6,000 markup or a $10,000 markup, but that payment is the same for 48 months as it would be true. for 84 months, yeah, they're going to go, oh, I'll just take it. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not realizing when you tell somebody it's 84 months or 120 months, it's like, do you know how long that is? Yeah. Like, do you have any clue? You should never take a finance that outlasts the warranty. No! <laughs> that should be rule number yeah, one. Yeah, no. If you're making payments, mm-hmm. you got to be war- You got to be warranty cover. Yeah, I mean, have to. I wouldn't... I, I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make in general is just not doing the, the full math. Oh, they, I mean, they they never do. I'm not saying that I'm like the perfect car buyer. Right. Like I'm I'm not a great car buyer right. when it comes to like stupid. Like I don't always take my own advice. You know what well, I mean? Well, none of us do. We but, want what we want. Right. So. But like at least when it comes to the financing aspects of it or the lease, yeah, I do all the math. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I actually game it out yeah. <laughs> on, well, on it, paper. Because when you do that, yeah, and I and I understand why people don't. Because when you go to a dealer, you you kind of want what you want. You get a little starry-eyed, and then the dealer's job is to run circles around you. So right. they're just like, sign on the bottom line, blah, 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 blah. And a lot of people do that. And then they get home, and they go, oh Yeah. Wait a minute. You mean I'm locked into this, for this, for that? Yeah. And then the bubble at the end is such? That's the thing that kind of freaks me out. And I have friends that have done that. And I'm like, what do you... Like, they'll call me, and they'll be like, so this is the finance, 2.9 APR. You know, I get that for, for 84 months. I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, do you understand what that means? And they go, no, what? I mean, I said, you can't afford it. That's so many months, I don't even know how long that is in years. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's 120 like seven months, years, seven, seven years, years, eight years. It's like, it's like I don't... <laughs> it's like eight years, right? It's yeah, eight years. I've never owned a car. The it's only car years? is... I'm going to do it right now. No, no, yeah, it's five times 12 is 60 times six. It's six, it's seven years. It's seven that's, years. That's, that's insane. Yeah. Like, I don't want to own a car. <laughs> the only car I've ever had for seven years is my Charger, and I've had that for 20. Yeah, seven years. Uh, if it's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time to be making a payment. Mm-hmm. Like, like a really long time. We, you know, the last new car I bought was in 2013 when I bought a Mustang GT. Yeah. Okay. And I paid cash for it, and that was it. And I, you know, and well, I didn't pay. No, I, I took it out. I think ten thousand dollars I took out on it, and I paid that off quick, as quick as I possibly could. I haven't had a car payment since 2014. And I won't have another one. I just okay. like everything I buy now, and the way that I look at it. And some people look at it differently. I look at something where if I can't pay cash for it, in my mind, and this is, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but in my mind, I can't afford it. Well, some people just don't have cash. That, that's time. correct. They that's don't. Correct. Have, they don't. Some people don't have the cash. Right. They, don't, they don't even have cash to buy a ten thousand dollar car. Right. right. So you, you got to consider those people. But sure. But if you're if you're making payments on a new car that outlasts the warranty. Yeah. You have fucked up in that math. Yeah, that's exactly. And I understand right. some people have no choice but to make payments. They're Agreed. making payments on a used car. Agreed. Uh, you know they need to get to work and get yeah. around. Like, gotta all right, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. And the fi- the system is set up to screw people like that with bad with bad credit yeah. or not much credit. But if you if you knowingly agree to make payments on a used car that are longer than the warranty period, you have fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a bad move. And like, granted, like there are some cars that come with ten year warranty. Yeah, you can get some Hyundai's. Absolutely. Some, I, I don't know about. Um, well, like I don't want to mess say, up my. I don't want to like start fucking it up. I'm just gonna type cars with the longest warranty. Are you hot? No. Okay. Do you? Are you? A little bit. I was gonna... Uh, 2019. Ten best new car warranties right now. Oh boy. So oh. Okay, so Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyundai and Kia, ten years have ten years hundred k yeah. on the powertrain. Right. Nobody's got a ten year bumper to bumper. No. The longest ten year bumper to bumper is also Hyundai Kia Genesis 
is five years sixty. Okay. Jaguar's got a five year sixty bumper to bumper. Really? Actually. Uh, and then you got Volkswagen, Infinity, Lincoln, Tesla, Cadillac with a four year fifty okay. bumper to bumper. But now, you can also buy, obviously, extended warranty. You can. You can. Yeah. But, I mean, you don't want to take a finance longer than a factory warranty. No. I, I wouldn't. If I mean, unless you've got some kind of... But this, this goes back to the whole used car mm-hmm. thing, right? Where used cars were... A year and a half ago, you could pick up a reasonable used car for five grand, for six grand. That would last you another 35, 40, 50,000 Well, let me just say that my... E46 BMW from All Cars Go to Heaven. That's different. Was thirty eight hundred. Well, there you go. Right. And and honestly, like you could have kept. There's no. If I didn't like no do a bunch of silly shit with it, there's no reason you couldn't have just continued driving that car. You'd have to do some maintenance, so obviously. Yeah. But but that car would have. That car would have kept going. And like I realize it's uh, that's one car. Um, but I mean, like, like, but the the idea of the two thousand dollar beater is kind of gone. That it point. is gone, and yeah. I check. I probably look at three hundred cars in a day. Right? Look at three hundred cars easily, in a day. easily. <laughs> I look at Facebook, <laughs> Craigslist, all the auctions. I look at everything because I'm always looking for that thing yeah. that I'm like, that's a good deal. Yeah, I can't get that part out of my head. And a lot of times, if it's a good deal, I'm like, I'm gonna buy it. Yeah, right? like I I literally this morning called on a 1997 Lincoln Town Car. Green with white interior because it only had thirty seven thousand miles on it, and I'm like, I could totally drive that. But what would you do? With I that? have no idea. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do anything. But I, I would drive it for a little while. The problem with, I mean, the problem with like old luxury cars, yeah, is that, and this whether it's it could be a, a Lincoln Town Car or it could be a Mercedes sure. S Class, yeah, or even the best example is the E five hundreds. E five hundreds, and I agree they look great. It's cool that they were contracted yeah. out to Porsche, yeah. and it, you know, yeah, they were pretty quick for '92. Yeah. But like, used luxury cars and old luxury cars, like the idea of a luxury car, yeah, is that it's like cutting edge. Like luxury cars are yes. like not exciting. Well, once I, you've I actually got that. I don't consider that a like the Lincoln is not a luxury car. No, but that's a car. It's just that's that's a used car. That that's a beater. Right. But like a, a Lincoln Town car with thirty seven thousand miles on it is pure novelty. Oh, without question. But it's a but it's a novelty that nobody gives a shit about. But that's but that's the whole <laughs> like, point. Like I would use cares. that car and be like, Matt, I'm coming to see you in LA. I would town car that right down to five and be comfortable and not give a shit. Yeah, but like you could you could do that in a much better car. It's I, still not giving I, I, I know, but it's just again. I, I look at that that mileage per dollar. Like how much can I get out of it? And I don't know why that's changed. The older I've gotten, the older yeah, I got, I the suppose, more I, I mean, look yes, at there's value in knowing a car. Well, a car that that has thirty seven thousand miles on it, but could also be used as a taxi oh, yeah. until it has three hundred thousand miles on it. There is value there, but are you going to enjoy putting no. the two hundred and seventy? No, of course not. You know that's sort of, of not. that's but sort of why I that's why I like I think I'm really just going to collect sports cars where I can connect with yeah. some kind of mechanical fizz that might not be available yeah. anymore. Yeah, you know I, I had a, the R one two nine SL. Yeah, it looked great. It was reliable. It was I used it as a car, yeah. but like there. I hope that that doo-doo-doo that I just got on my thing doesn't make it into the podcast. Let me make sure to click the do not disturb on my computer. I hope I hope the people on the podcast don't hear that email alert I just got. Oh. <laughs> um, but, um, but there was nothing exciting about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't well. like it was faster or smoother or yeah. any... You know what I mean? It was, it was the best they could do at the time. Sure. And sort of the... The average of what they do now is yeah. better. I mean, if you look like the daily, I, like I had, it looked great though. I mean, it's, it's it looks gorgeous. Great. Yeah, it's a beautiful. But for so many people that aren't us, meaning non-real enthusiasts that want something more than that, it's a fabulous car. Sure, it's a fabulous car. Well, and that's why the values are. That's why anyone that works is twenty five thousand dollars. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But like, if you look at like I look at what I do on on that that daily basis. Like, right in COVID times, where am I going? I go to the supermarket. Yeah. Go to my warehouse. I go to, like, I don't, I don't go anywhere anymore. You know, Asia drives to the, the, the city. 
You know, so like my 20 year old Grand Cherokee is completely adequate for taking any place. You bought a 20 year old Grand Cherokee? Yeah, it's in the garage. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's, it, and it, it's just, but it's easy. It's yeah. totally easy. And like, I don't, the thing is, I don't care. And that's parked in the garage right next to my Bronco. And like, that's what we switch off on. Is, is those. If I want something fun, yeah. I'll do Charger, I'll do 911, I'll do Daytona or something. I don't like that. really have anywhere to go either, I, which is a problem when I've got a bunch of sports cars that are great to like go somewhere right. and I don't have anywhere to go. Right. That's that's kind of a problem. Well, it is a problem, but you know, at, at, at some point, we are going to open up again and we're going to be sure. able to go wherever we want. I and, mean, it's not going to happen. You, you can go at some place. You could go. It's just. Sure, I can go for a drive. There's yeah. no reason I can't go sure. for a drive. It's not that I can't go anywhere. I don't mean to use the word can't. Right. I don't have anywhere to go. Right. <laughs> I, live I, know, four, I, I live four miles from my office. <laughs> I know. My new house is going to be one mile from my office and I'm going to have even fewer places to go. Dude, your fridge is acquired. So I'm, man. I'm, I find myself. Making up places to go just to drive the car. I don't Absolutely. Have any, I, you know. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm now back to having more cars than I have things to do with them. Well, it's, it's interesting. Last year, because there were, there were cars that I had that I, I sold, and I was like, well, I'm going to keep this, like, a, like my van. I was like, I'm going to keep my van. And I was like, well, what am I going to do with it? Yeah. I'm not going. So, sold the van. Yeah. My Trans Am, I was like, this is great. I'm going to keep my Trans Am. And I was like, but I'm not going. Yeah. I'm going to sell the Trans Am. And you, like, Sunday I went out just for a drive, and I took the 911 out. And it was great. And it, it was a novelty. It was that I'm just going to go out and blow some steam, at, not out of the car, but out of my head. Yeah, yeah. Just as a mental thing. But I didn't, I didn't go anywhere. I, well, I that's, just, what my, that's what I do with my old Italian cars. I right? drive in fucking circles. Yeah, that's because where else are you going to go? You got nowhere else to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah, I like, know, dude. And even at this point, because of my BMW, I'm being such a vagina about it because it's been raining so much and it's too nice. The car's literally never seen rain. Well, then there's no reason. Cars 16 you, years you old have, have never seen rain. You have once. rain cars. It, there's no reason to yeah. have it see rain. Well, I'm getting real spoiled with an electric crossover. Well, yeah. Because that's the ultimate, I don't give a fuck, a least electric crossover. Yeah. You want to talk about, it's I disposable. don't Disposable. You want to talk about, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. This thing's going to the crusher in 10 years. <laughs> and I don't fucking care. They're going to recycle it and turn it into a fucking vibrator at yeah. some point. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? I don't give a shit. That, but I think you, you know, you have to have that. You have to have one of those cars, if you can, where you just don't care and it's basic transportation. Um, but again, this is where we come back to like the used car market. Like Carvana now is offering record prices for I know. used cars. CarMax, record prices for you. I have a buddy of mine, love him to death. He just paid $32,000 for a 2016 Chrysler 300 with 30,000 miles on it. Wait, say that again? 32 k 32 k For a what? 2016. 2016 Chrysler 300? Yeah. No, 2018. I'm sorry. 2018 Chrysler Was it a V8 300. at least? No, it was six. Oh. <laughs> you want to talk about a car that but, is not but, worth 32 grand. But. And they're going to make, they have to make money on that. That's what they paid. That's what they paid. Oof. But that's why. You think they're overpaying? And did he find, did he later find it, what they were selling it for? No. I don't think so. Uh, see that, see that would be interesting. I, I don't think so. I mean, I'd I wonder curious. if Carvana is, is. Carvana's driving the market through the roof. Well, I wonder if they're overpaying just to keep inventories high, you know. And I, if I think they're, they are. If they're... But Carvana and CarMax are doing what Bring a Trailer did for high-end cars. Mm -hmm. Right now, Carvana and CarMax are Bring a Trailering the entire, like, sure. mundane used car market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's pricing Well, they're Because they're it. making it a, a not a global, but a national marketplace right. where they'll you can, you can buy some car... At a store they've got Correct. on the other side of the country, and they'll ship it to you for right. free or whatever. But yeah. still, like when we talk my, about uh, GM at the shop sold his, uh, I want to say it was a, what was the first year of the uh, EcoBoost Raptor? 18? 17? 17. 17? Yeah. It was a, either 17 or 18 Raptor with like 57,000 miles on it on his second transmission. He got 55 grand for that's it from insane. Carvana. I mean, that's. On, his, on, his, on a replacement gearbox. Yeah, the, I don't know. But but again, you go back to I had gone to, to Vegas and I I drove the the Bronco and the the uh, Maverick mm -hmm. Maverick pickup truck. So I had a buddy of mine in LA lives down there. He's like, Hey Mike, I got a, a 2016 Nissan Frontier two wheel drive. I want to get a Maverick. I said, okay. He I said, What'd you pay for the truck? He goes, I bought it. You know, three four years ago, I bought it used. He goes, I paid you know eighteen grand for the truck. No, I paid sixteen grand for the truck. I go, Okay, cool. I go go to Carvana right now. He goes, what do you think I'll get for it? I go, eh, 24 to 26. 
He's like, dude, there's what are you out of your fu-? yelling at me? You yeah, have yeah. no idea what you're fucking talking about. Okay, twenty four seven. Yeah, but the but the problem is he's got nothing to buy. That's exactly correct. Yeah. How and, is the Maverick? Finn, I loved it. I loved it. I think it is the perfect truck for ninety percent of pickup truck buyers. Um, it is. It's it's not luxurious in any way. I drove the base XL. Is it like reason? It doesn't need to be luxurious, but is it like very well appointed? Uh, actually, at very nice. It is. Yeah, seats okay. are covered. I mean, there's a lot of plastic, which is fine. But the base XL is a twenty thousand dollar truck. Yeah, if you could find it for that. But apparently, uh, those don't really exist. Well, so for twenty five, you can get one that's reasonably appointed. Uh-huh. But like the XL with the hybrid comes standard with an eight inch. Touchscreen, Apple Touch. It gets CarPlay. It gets Android, Android Auto, power windows, AC, cruise control. As far as I'm concerned, like that's a modern car for me. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for twenty two to twenty five grand, great truck. Front wheel drive, forty four miles to the gallon with the hybrid. Um, then I drove the Lariat with the all wheel drive and the EcoBoost motor. Righteously quick. It and which fantastic. EcoBoost is it? Two three. The two three. Yeah. yeah. And it was plenty of power, comfortable. Can you with, tow anything with it? Uh, Four thousand pounds. All right, so a Miata on an open trailer? Yeah, exactly. Um, but the nice part is it's compact enough that most people can use it every day. Yeah. And the capacity, Well, that's the problem with half tons. That's the problem with half tons. They're, they're, they're all gigantic. I mean, the, the load heights are too high. Mm-hmm. They're too wide. They don't fit in garages. But it'll haul. Like, the payload capacity is 1,500 pounds. So that's pretty good. That's impressive for yeah. a compact truck. Now, the bed is only... I think the bed's 4 feet 6 inches. But the quad cab bed. Quad cab with a bed. The quad cab. Four with doors. The four doors with a right. bed. Right, yeah. But the two door one has a longer bed, right? Is there a two door? There's not a two door. There's no two door. No, oh, there's only the four door. Mm. But with the tailgate down and the you know the bed extender on it, whatever the case is. You put a motorcycle or snowmobile back there. there? You can put a motorcycle diagonal on that thing. Uh huh. So, and you can put mountain bikes and whatever else. Like I said, for, for 85 to 90% of the urban pickup people, it'll be more than, than what they need. For a price point they can afford, it's a it's a cheaper version of the Hyundai Santa, the Santa Fe, I think uh-huh. that was called Santa Cruz, uh, Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz. Um, but it was nice. It was it was super impressive. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Cool, you know. And I was like, you know what? I would like if I needed a small pickup, I'd buy one. Why not? Comfortable. Well, it's, I, it's you know it's so funny the the dedication to the Tacoma. Have you driven? You've driven Tacomas. Yeah, they're miserable. They're yeah, they're not good. They're but, reliable, but they're not. Good. So where do you think that, do you think it's just the Tacoma love is from the, you know, legendary durability and that's it? I think the Tacoma is, I think, yes. They Listen, they are fabulous trucks from a reliability standpoint. They're pretty bombproof. Like, I've done shit in a Tacoma that I'm like, this should totally have broken it. Never broke, right? Um, but they don't drive well. They are They're underpowered. They're they don't have a lot of room. They're good, but they're not great. And I, I the the, can, the popularity I, I, of those I, I things kind of astounding. I don't understand. It's like the Forerunner. You know, the Forerunner is basically my sister in law just bought a Forerunner and is like just loves it so much. And I'm like, I don't understand what it is that you love. Five speed automatic gearbox. Like my like boy has a old. 2006, not 16, yeah. 2006 Forerunner. Yeah. That he painted in the new color tan. Okay, it's the current the the uh, and it it looks like the brand new. Like you can't tell anymore yeah. that it's like all you have to do is put the new color on it yeah. and it's the same. And like and it, it it's so much of it is exactly the same. It's amazing. I, I get it. I think a lot of it is nostalgia. I think there are certain vehicles out there that people simply want to own at some point in their life. And, you know, I want a Tacoma. Why do you want a Tacoma? I don't know. I just want one. It's okay. okay. I mean, in fairness, my friend who has the 06, yeah. for, it's largely been bulletproof. Oh, it's dude, been this guy's only car, and it doesn't break. It's they are got 300,000 miles. Yeah. 300,000 mile trucks. No and problem. I guess, and, and that is a virtue. Durability is a virtue. But to me, durability is only a virtue when it's paired with a really high quality experience, like the Lexus LS. Well, or that's something like that. But that, see, the, the LS, like the LS that you had, that car, even by today's standards, was so massively over engineered and so oh, yeah. massively overbuilt. And even if you get into a clean one now that's 20 years old, yeah. you go, 
Oh, that's nice. It's really quiet. It's, in there. it's quiet. Yeah. It, but it's still super supple and nice. The materials were really good. The the, the sound deadening was really good. Yeah. Fabulous car. Yeah. That that's just a testament to what that is, right? That they the Toyota they knocked it out of the park so far with that particular car that it's difficult to measure up to yeah. that again. Well nobody's I mean, literally nobody is doing those things. No. Not 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 now. And no, yeah, I know. Not, not then now. and not now. Yeah. No um, one is like I, I don't know of any car that was that was engineered as well as that car. No. Not not ever. No. I mean a lot of you'll get the a lot of the guys that'll be like the vintage Mercedes and the vintage this and not that I don't think so. I think that those cars will they like the old diesel Mercedes will which will run forever, but there's no experience there where Well, I mean, how hard is it to make an 80 horsepower engine that runs forever? Well, yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> I mean, it's five point one compression. I mean, it's uh, there's a re- it, it it it's those cars are very very durable for sure. The yeah. powertrain is, but like it, they don't. Um, yeah, they they don't offer the same type of performance. No, at like the Lexus has that that level of durability, yeah. but combined with a car that would do 150 miles an hour. Yeah, that's true. You know, I, I think from when you talk about the Tacoma, I think it's it's that, but just from a a reliability and durability standpoint. Yeah. I think that's what people look at. Like, I'm gonna buy this. It'll go 300,000 miles. I can give it to my kid. He can give it to his kid. It'll. That's just, true. It'll literally just run forever. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're gonna make the 84 month payments, right? <laughs> you might as well to circle back on where we were. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, we're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna yeah. get into a finance of this thing for ten years, you I, want it working at the other end. You know, I, I look at stuff that's out there now, and I don't know, I don't know if there's anything that I want to buy. Like, I personally haven't seen anything that I'm like, I really want to buy that car. I just, I just have it. Unless we're talking like, you mean brand new cars, brand new cars. I haven't seen anything or driven anything lately that I'm like, I would spend money to own this. Like a daily driver, it's tough. A daily driver. That's one thing, as a just an economical whatever around, and I would probably buy an EV. I'd probably buy something like the Maki or something like well, that. Well, I don't know. I don't think I would buy that. I mean, we leased it, right? But it's something... I feel great knowing that in thirty nine months, get someone's going to take that, yeah. and I'm just going to either get another one or get yeah. like I don't. I think uh, we'll probably we'll probably have our our regular car. Yeah. Will probably be an EV going forward, yeah, which makes sense because it's nice sure. and it's easy and yeah. it's a nice sitting in traffic experience. But it, it may be another Ford. Like yeah. I've already said, how Ford can get me to buy another one. Okay, but if Ford wants me to buy another Mach E, they need to come out with a trim they call LX. Okay, which would have the GT's seats. Okay, which were fabulous. The GT's mag ride, but okay. tuned for comfort. Yeah. And rear-wheel drive, long range. So like a GTS version of a Cayenne. Well, I don't want the all-wheel drive. Okay. Not only because it has less efficiency, but because it completely makes the handling weird as hell. Okay. And I don't like it. The hand, the rear-wheel drive one is much more fun yeah. than the all-wheel drive one. And I want mag ride because I want a little more body control. Yeah, okay. But I don't want it tuned harsh, sporty. I want it tuned luxury. Okay. I mean, yeah. That's how they'll get me. Other than that, I'm getting an electric Macan. Yeah, when well, that comes fine. out. Well, didn't Larry, Larry just bought one? Didn't no. Larry, Larry got a Tycon. He got a Tycon. Uh, a Tycon. Um, the Grand cross, Turismo. Cross Turismo. Cross. That's the the wagon. The, wagon. the Cross Turismo is the Tycon Outback. Oh right. It's got the <laughs> it's got the raised suspension. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's got the the cladding on it. Okay. Because you know you live in New York, he drives in shitty roads. Yeah. No, that makes sense. He doesn't. But they have the they have the Cross Turismo, and then they have the Sport Turismo okay. now, which is the the wagon, yeah. but without the Outback yeah. stuff on it. Which is awesome, but we're now we're in six figure cars. Absolutely, and I don't want a six yeah. figure daily car. I mean, that that's the whole thing. I mean, like I said, I don't know. I haven't driven anything as of late where I've said I would buy. Honestly, the Maverick is is the only thing that I've driven. And if I needed it, which I don't, I don't need a pickup truck. I don't tall. I don't haul. I don't do any of that shit. Well, if you needed a pickup truck, wouldn't you buy a twenty year old one? Me, yeah, I, yeah, I would. I didn't mean, you have one? Yeah, an F one fifty. Yeah, and I didn't use it, so I sold it. Yeah. Like it was, the, the, you know. Um, but to, for for just the kind of the visceral thing where I'm like I want something fun and to go out and play with and stuff, like I bought my 911, and that that totally fills that need. That yeah. fills my I'm going on a road trip. I, I can whip it around. I can beat on it. It's reliable. It's 
you know, it's it's still fun. It's not that fast, but it's, it works. It does what it needs to do. Um, if it, at a certain point, if it feels quick. It, yeah. yeah. And, like, where, like, where am I going? That's the other point. You can only drive so fast. So, it's. But, I mean, I, we could say that that's how we know we're getting old. Or we could say that, that the, the cars have changed so much faster than the roads. Well, I think that's, I think that's part of it. Um, I know that, like, I can only drive so fast on, yeah. the, on the canyon roads around here. Yeah. And that car works. In the same way where I could jump in a GTI and still have a, it'd be a hoot, like, to, to drive around in that. Um, with that said, I'm also doing, like, the Daytona, which is just, un, it's going to be unusable, but in a different giggle fest way. Right. You know what I mean? It'll, it'll scratch a different itch. Um, right. And, and with a car that's like that... A really old and really overpowered car. Yeah. It's not like you drive that the same way you would drive no. a Tycon Turbo S. Oh, God, no. You know what I mean? Like, it's when when you have this massive engine and an old car, but it's loud and it's ridiculous yeah. and it's kind of exhausting to oh, extract. You, you don't want to road mean? trip it. Well, and you also, you don't drive around like a shithead. No, you know, you don't. You, <laughs> you know well, what you I mean. Can't. You kind of pick and choose. Yeah, like like the louder my car is, the less likely I am to drive it like Dude, a shithead. I I just drove because I'm getting the charger restored, and I just drove the charger like this was about about a month ago from here down to Palm Desert. I filled up five times. <clears throat> it's five. It's not that far. It's 487 miles. There. Yeah, I filled up five times. How big is the tank? 19 gallons. Oh wow, really? Yeah, it's, it's that bad. Oh yeah, it's like six eight miles. A That's day. really bad. And like. When I got there, I was just like, oh, my God. And I look back on all the rallies and all the racing and everything that I did with that car. And I'm like, the frick was I thinking? Making a career. Ma- well, well, yeah, making a career. That's what happens. Yeah. You know, you, you, the, some people's careers are, are based on this sort of physical exhaustion that comes <laughs> from <laughs> That's what it was. driving ridiculous cars <laughs> long distances. Dude, I got out of that car. And I was just like, oh, dear God. And the reason it's going down there, like, I'm adulting the crap out of the car. Like, all sound deadening, yeah. power windows, air conditioning. You're like, putting more gears in it? I'm putting more gears in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm putting a lock-up converter in it and changing the gear. So I can cruise it at, like, I can cruise it at 80 miles an hour now, but I want to cruise it at 80 miles an hour efficiently or 90 miles an hour efficiently, yeah. which I which you can do now with the technology. Yeah. But, like, I went down a size. I went from a 3-inch to a 2.5-inch exhaust. Oh really? Oh yeah. Can you do that without like losing significant power? You you can, but honestly, power wise, I don't even care anymore. Like if it sounds if it sounds, it sounds right, you're good. It sounds pretty much the same, and it'll still do burnouts and donuts. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's not like I'm never racing the car again. I'm like, I want to be able to take Asia in that car and be like, let's go to Monterey, which is 120 miles away, and not be destroyed when we mm-hmm. get there. So like all new glass, all new weather seals, all new ever as. It's, I'm making it into as good as it can be with still running an old school big block and, yeah. and you know. Road tripping old cars is very tiring. It's exhausting, dude. It's exhausting. Even I drove my Ferrari to Palm Springs, which is, sounds like very luxurious. Yeah. No. But it was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> and and when you have the roof on, because I had to had to have the roof on. Yeah. Um, because I can't I can't put the seat where I want and have the roof behind the seat. Okay. So I have to go with the roof on or leave the roof at home. I mean, it has air conditioning. No. Oh, it doesn't. My Ferrari does not have air conditioning. Oh, I didn't know that. No. It it came with air conditioning new. But no. But longer. it didn't work when I bought it. Okay. And according to Donnie, who I believe yeah. that using it saps all of the throttle response. I believe that. He said it takes like 40 horsepower out of the I car. He's like, it's there, but it's... Not working, and it looks like it hasn't been charged in 20 years. He's like, Do you want me to just take it out entirely yeah. and you'll save like 50 pounds? I was like, Yep, take yeah. it out, put it in a box. Do when we so, but but it, but when you try to take the roof off, it's fine, right? But with the roof on and the windows open, the heat just doesn't escape from yeah. the car, it just gets trapped it's gotta in be, there. It's, it's gonna be really, miserable. It was really hot. It's gonna be, I don't know, it's fine if it's like. A reasonable temperature. If it's seventy. Yeah, but it, in in Palm Springs, it was like a hundred and five. No. It was fucked. Dude, up. <laughs> I did that when I drove my when I bought that Trans Am in Dallas, and oh, I yeah, drove it thing. back to. You sold that thing, right? Yeah, I sold it. Yeah. But I bought it in Dallas and drove it back here in like August. Yeah. 
Not no, I did that. No, I'm sorry, not in August. I did it in May. And put Dallas in May in like Scottsdale it was 107. I remember mm-hmm. we stayed at the Valley Ho in Scottsdale, and we left the Valley. The Ho. Valley Ho. The Valley Ho was good. Yeah, and it was 109 degrees out, and I was like, "Oh, this isn't gonna work." I was. I drank probably five 32 ounce yeah. iced teas. Never peed once. I, and, and <laughs> like that was not fun. And Hannah was like, "I'm never doing this again with you." Not because. Oh, Hannah did say she was with you. She was with me. Wow. Not because. Rupa. And the car was fine. Yeah. But the my like heat and stress of, of of the whole thing. She was like, "You are a miserable piece of shit doing this, dude." It's not. It's listen. It's still if you're doing it in context with friends and you're all in that same mindset mm. where you're doing an old car rally someplace, and you you all have the same anxiety where I'm probably gonna break. Yeah, like something's gonna fucked up. I'm gonna be on the side of the road, but my friends are here, so it's okay. Yeah, that's one thing. But when you're by yourself, like, that is, uh, it's kind of terrifying. Yeah. Like when I did, I ran the Daytona in um, Optimus Streetcar Challenge in 2011 in Vegas. When I left, I left from Pahrump, and I drove, and I just, I did the, the nav, and I went through the desert. Now, Asia. To get home. Yes. You went, like, through, like, Death Valley? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm with Asia, okay, and we are the only car out there. Yeah. And all I'm doing, and Asia's like, oh, it's so pretty. And the car is just. You're just going, don't break. Dude, don't I break. I prayed like you pray <laughs> when you have like food poisoning or you're vomiting over a toilet. And yeah, you're like, yeah. please, dear God, I'll never do this again. Just get me home without the car. Yeah. Ran fine. But the amount of anxiety that yeah. I had is 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 rough. And it just, it it beats you up. Dude, when it was like 107 mentally. in Palm Springs and I hit a traffic jam at the oh. fucking <laughs> Morongo <laughs> Casino. I was just like, oh my God, please don't, please don't overheat. You know, and the car was fine. Of course. I was going, please don't fucking It's don't because overheat. it's all please dude. And you, please don't overheat. But please that's, overheat. so that's the beauty of a new car. Like yeah. when people say, well, why don't you drive it? That's the beauty of a new car. It's, it's, it's under warranty. Everything works exactly as it should. You're not relying on 25 year old parts. Yeah. You know, and it's like, there's something to be said about that. There's no question. It's yep. just, and like, I, if it's just me, I don't care. I've been in that situation a million times. If I break down, I can deal with it. Yeah. I don't want to be there with somebody that I care about. No, I know. Or like my friend, have my friend looked at me and be like, why did you take me on this stupid trip? With yeah. Me? I just don't like, I don't do a good job of planning. <laughs> in what to, capacity? Well, in terms of being like, I'm not ready to sit on the side of the road for four hours. You know? Oh, dude. I don't plan for that. I mean, I got shit to do. Well, that but that that's part of the old car. So I have, like in the chart, I think I told you this, but I have my oh shit kit. Yeah. So every part that's ever broken on that car yeah. is in the oh shit kit. Right. And it's in the trunk of the charger. And I'm so the problem is now I'm so used to breaking down that it doesn't even phase me yeah. anymore. That like if it. Breaks, well, you could also fix it. I can't. Yeah, but can't even even so, it doesn't mean you like to. Like I remember changing it on the Monte Carlo that I had. Like, I was coming back from L.A., and the plugs just got fouled out everything. I was changing spark plugs with a, a headlight on my thing on the side of the 5. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. At 11 when o'clock the, at When night. the upside of that is a Monte Carlo. Yeah, but that's, that's, <laughs> that's exactly not. correct. You know, at least, like, for me, at least the upside is a Ferrari. It's a Ferrari, yeah. You know, it's not a Carlo. You're like, <laughs> why am I here All again? this for a fucking Monte? <laughs> like, oh, my God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's so true. But why hasn't someone uh, <laughs> why hasn't someone put a manual gearbox in a Grand National yet? Ah, they just did. Someone does someone make a so, kit yet? Yes. So check this out. In fact, I was just talking uh, Silver Sport Transmissions in uh, uh, Rockford, Tennessee. They actually did the transmission on the Suburban that we road tripped. That myself uh-huh. and Alana road tripped. They just posted that they did a six speed manual, a TKX, which yeah. is the small new transmission in a uh, in a T type. Which is a grand national. Which is a grand national. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which was cool. That's awesome. So I, I want to, I want to talk to the owner and see how that car is with a manual because it's, it's got to be cool. It's got to be way better than because like, well, the old I, slush box is. Just, I like a grand national, like yeah. the idea of a grand national yeah. very much. Yeah. I just don't like. I've driven grand nationals. Yeah. They're dull as rocks. That's kind. You know. Yeah. But like, but they could be cool. Like, Detroit speed suspension and a manual gearbox on a grand national could yeah. be kind of fun. It could be, but it's like any other old thing. You have to do so much to make it almost good. Like, <laughs> like not even just like almost good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? 
And that was like my Fox body. That's exactly right. After how much years, time? Yeah. How much time and money did you put in that car? Two and you years, were like, like a bunch of breakdowns, like all this shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, this is like almost good. Right. <laughs> You're right. It totally is. Like this would just be good if it had a voodoo engine. In right. It. <laughs> Like, how much would that take? <laughs> Shit. And 30K in well, two dude, more years? God that, damn it. I've, I've, I've gone down this road. We When I did the Monte Carlo, speaking of the Monte Carlo, like, I did a, a, a 383 stroker motor mm-hmm. with EFI, brand new air conditioning, overdrive transmission, new brakes. I made that car as good as you could make it, and yeah. it was still just okay. Yeah. The best that it could ever be. <laughs> It's just okay. Yeah. And that's the problem. It's like, I just spent yeah. 50 grand, and it's just, a, like, that's 50 grand in parts and shit. Yeah. Should be well better than okay. Yeah. Should be awesome. I've I've been in other people's cars, too. But if, I mean, everything from, uh, you know, from from Mustangs to, to, to BMW 7 Series. Oh, yeah. To, to older Mercedes. Mm-hmm. And it's, and yeah, they've, they've spent endless hours, endless amounts of money, fabricated shit to end up at okay. okay. Yeah. What's going to be interesting? It is- really makes you respect the people who work at the factory who like, like it really makes you respect everyone who worked on the 1991 NSX. Like, Wow. That's better than okay. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Or the E46 M3. That's right. You know. So that's the, a car I would spend my money on. E46 M3? NSX. You should. Oh, NSX? Yeah, yeah I'd, them I'd too. I'd buy an NSX. Them too. I would buy an NSX. Well, the time has passed, unfortunately. I know, they're through the roof now. Yeah. Well, it's, it's going to be interesting. So you have to, when the Daytona is done, you have to drive that. Because you're, I think you're the only person that's ever reviewed that car. It was in 2011. I know, it was before that. Oh, it might have been nine. I think it was 20, uh, 2009, 2009, maybe. It was a very long time ago. And that was when it was still... Ca- that was in its rawest form. It was very tiring. It's exhausting. I remember I drove it for like two hours, and it was very yeah. tiring. You were like, all right, we're done. Yeah. Um, but but I it's wa- going to have an automatic in it now, right? It's going to have the 8-speed, have the yeah. GF 8-speed. But I'm, I'm curious, to, and it'll have new suspension and new brakes and the whole deal. Do you I, use the Hellcat shifter for that? What do you do? We're going to use a, a shifter, but it'll be it won't be the Hellcat shifter. It'll it's be a different shifter. But does it? It's like electronic. It'll be electronic shift shifter. by wire. Shift right? by wire. It'll blip on downshifts. Like it'll you, do. You're just gonna do like push button. No, push no, button no. with paddles. No, no, it'll be it'll be a shifter. It'll be an actual shifter. It'll be an actual mm-hmm. shifter, but then we can do paddles as well. Yeah. And so, but it'll do everything that the ZF is supposed to do. It'll blip on downshifts. It'll do all that stuff. That's cool. Um. But I'm curious to see what you think because you're one of the few people that have driven oh, it. Yeah. Okay. How and long it, is that going to? Well, that's a dumb question. Never mind. It should be done by March. You think so? Yeah. According to Kevin, who's really? the car, Wesley. Yeah. He's oh, like, God. I don't want this thing here anymore. I want to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, does he have to like invent anything to do it? No, that's the beauty of it. We're using we're using the stock K frame, which is modifying it a little bit. Uh-huh. We're using we're still running torsion bars. Uh-huh. We're still running leaf springs. Um. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. But we're, we're doing yeah. like a modified four link leaf spring combination. So it'll be better. It'll have a lot more rubber. Um, we're gonna run three thirty fives in the backs and three oh fives in the front. We'll do. Um, you know, it, it's still gonna be steering. Have electric power steering. Uh no, it's so, gonna be steering box. Oh wow, Mopar steering box. Like nice. you know, like firm fill box. Nice vague steering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it like that so but it'll have we're using acr viper brake, brakes from the last acr the final acr no, that's cool. so it'll it'll go it'll stop it'll turn but you know what it'll be almost okay are you putting sound deadening in it all like the sound deadening, it? Yeah. Dude, all the sound deadening yeah um It'll be again. It'll be a novelty. It'll be fun. It'll be stupid fast. It'll be terrifying. And I'll go. Yeah, I'll yeah. go. Well, you're one of the few that will drive it. Yes, I will. Like that's not that that's not a car that the keys go over to anybody because it's like no 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 no. Oh, that's like that's dude. I have friends that are like, so long. I get to drive it. I'm like, no, no. Like that, not even. I, just, I don't. I'm, I'm a real <laughs> no. real bitch about my cars. About who I let drive. There's very few uh, people I will let drive them. Uh. Like, Ironically, I would let my wife drive any of them if she had any desire at all, but she has none. That looks like Asia. My yeah. Asia could drive whatever she wants. She just physically can't drive the Chargers because she's too tiny. Oh, that's she can't see over the steering. Yeah, that's a problem. So, um, but I don't know, man. Like I look at stuff that that we want to buy. Like I would buy an NSX, but like I said, the window has has gone now. Kind of, yeah. Um, and also, like the, the, you know, that's a car where durability was a virtue, right? But now it's been so long that 
it's not just about servicing the engine anymore. There's all this other little shit that you got to do with Dude, those that's... cars, and it's not. A, those aren't Accord parts. No. You know, the NSX has a bunch of other parts that are just NSX parts, yeah. and they can be expensive. So it's not... It's cheaper than a 355, but it's not, like... It's not a whole lot cheaper than, like, a 964 to no. maintain, or, like, a, a Ferrari 348 or 328. Like, those maintenance costs are now kind of in line. Well, and that's what people, I think, they fail to understand, because the the, the NSX came out in, what, 94? 91. Okay. 91. So that's a 30 year that's a 30 yeah. year old car. That's an yeah. old car. You know, when you when you think about that and then you're you're 100% correct on those little parts that yeah. you don't think about, right? Like when I did the 928, that was a whole nother ball game. Yeah. And 928s now like a 928 an 84 928 automatic with it had 4000 miles, I'll give it that. It sold for $95,000. Yeah. Every single part on that 4000 mile car has the rigidity of a ramen noodle. <laughs> so, like, everything is going to... Every, I remember pulling connectors off that thing, and they would just disintegrate. Yeah. Right? Was that the biodegradable wiring it era? It was, yes. The, <laughs> so, the, the sheathing on the wiring was... It had the same chemical in it that they use... Um, believe it or not, that's in the butter that they put in movie theater popcorn. Mm. And so, that's why mice and rats get in there, and all of a sudden, it's get like... the fuck out of here. I really? swear to Christ. That's hilarious. And all of a sudden, it's like, I smell popcorn! And then that's why they go in and eat all the wiring. My friend Carl Ruiz, before he passed away, was talking about the the chemical compounds in um, truffle oil, which yeah. have nothing to do with truffles. And Bosey found they were awfully close to what's in synthetic motor oil. That's probably not shocking. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, I don't know. I... I always warn people where it's restoring an old semi-exotic or anything like that is ultra expensive. It's going to be far more expensive to maintain than it was when it was new because the parts are so old, the parts are out of date. Even the the best kept NOS stuff is still 30 years old and, and stuff just degrades. Plastics degrade. Things degrade. Well, someone just spent on, um, I saw it today on uh, P car market, someone spent $380,000 on an 06... Uh, 430 Spider six speed with 780 miles on it. Now, oof, that car. Now, I've driven a 430 Spider with a stick. Yeah, fucking awesome. Fast, awesome. Fast. Yeah, fast. Completely of, different than one of the, the best battles. driving experiences around. Yeah, but to pay up that much for such low miles, um, you can't drive it. Oh, no, no, not at all. If you're going to drive it, it needs a $20,000 service at a before minimum. you drive it. At a minimum. And then if you drive it, you start driving all the value out of it mm -hmm. uh, because the miles are so low. So what do you do with it? I don't know. You stare at it? like what I you... guess. I mean, I, look, there will always be premium money. So if it could be an investment and you stare at it. And, yeah. You know, maybe you roll the dice by driving it once or twice a year. Um, but at what, at what, at what point... Like, and I, I get the whole investment thing. I understand that. But if it's a place to park your money and you just want to look at it and say, I own a 700-mile Ferrari that's 20 years old, okay. I don't I don't personally don't see the point in that, especially when you're paying that super premium for it because I don't know how much higher it's going to go. But if you buy, like, your Countach is a perfect example of that. You drive that car. I do. You and enjoy that car. Uh, I, I do. And I... I rolled the dice correctly because that car is doubled in value Correct. despite my driving it. But do you think mileage, if you have the service history like you have on your car, the documentation you have with your car, do you think mileage really matters? Um, it does to a point. I mean, there's stages, right? There's like sub a thousand miles. Yeah. And then you have the, the sort of thousand to five thousand miles where right. the value is still very very high but right. you can drive it a little bit yeah you know if it's got under a thousand miles on it you really can't drive it at all right um if it's a you know a thousand to five thousand you could drive it a very little bit and then you've got that sort of five to ten or twelve yeah. you know it's like these stages yeah, where yeah, yeah. so my car i bought with 28 or 26,000 kilometers on it. Okay. And now it has 34,000 kilometers That's great. on it. So I'm I'm still in the window, the yeah. same window. Right. I haven't driven it to the next 
but window. Do you think you will or do you want to? Like you would I do- couldn't if I wanted to. I mean, I, I, I don't have enough time and enough yeah. places to go. Yeah. And if, enough, you know. Do you still, are you still enjoying the car? Well, I haven't had it for. Well, I know, but when, three months. But when you when you drive it, oh the, yeah, it's like fucking the, great. It is. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. How is? Let me ask you this. this is, I know. I don't know if it's an apples to orange question. How does the experience in the Countach compare to the three twenty eight? Well, like I would love for you to do. They're a, definitely of the same era. I would love for you to do a back to back. Yeah, they're of the, They're certainly of the yeah. same era. The um, the. The 328 is a little lighter, a little happier to rev. Okay. Um, it's uh, it's actually a little less roomy once you're inside of it. The three the Countach actually has a little more space, believe it or not, okay. once you're in it. Um, you know the gated dog leg shifters, yeah. same kind of same kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, the Countach feels um, tighter. Um, you know it. It, it feels uh, more rigid. Yeah. The steering is a little tighter. It's manual, right? It's manual steering. Is, is the Ferrari manual steering? Yes, it is. They're both okay. manual steering. Are they manual brakes or are they power brakes? No, they're both power brakes. Okay. Um, the They actually have the same brakes. Oh, okay. Same rotors and pads. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of the same stuff in okay. both those cars. Bosch made a bunch of shit. Yeah, <laughs> just cars. crossover. <laughs> um, the um, but you know you can definitely um, the Ferrari you can definitely feel the flexibility of the chassis not being a proper coupe. Okay. So that's what you get in '80s yeah. Targas is you hit a bump and there's a little jiggly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which doesn't bother me. I right. would trade that experience for having the roof off. Sure. I, I prefer to have the roof off. Um, the, the Ferrari doesn't feel as... It's not nearly as intimidating. I the Countach is intimidating. Yeah, I can see that. It's hard to see. Yeah. You know, you're always aware of the Everything. fact that you're in a fucking Countach. Right. Um, and it... and it, You know, it feels very, very... The Countach feels very well made when you're driving it. Okay. You go over a bump, the ride is amazing. Is it really? It's like a Cadillac. Really? It's great. Yeah, it rides beautifully. It's a great like road trip car. Oh shit! It's super comfortable. Have I you? drove it to Santa. Santa Barbara is the furthest I've ever really driven it, but it drove. Okay, well great. that's what that's hundred miles from here. One hundred twenty each way. Yeah, so that's that's a nice it was, trip. It was great. Yeah, it's lovely. Air conditioning works in the Countach. That's perfect. I would admit you have to have. It. Yeah, you're fucked if you don't have air conditioning yeah. in that car. But um, it's um, is it is it that much? F- is it that much more visceral than the three twenty eight? No. Oh, okay. I mean, it's they're of they're of this. You know, one yeah. they sound a little different. The Countach yeah. is faster. Yeah. Um, but but it, it's fairly similar experiences okay. to drive them both. The Countach isn't hard to drive. It takes um, a while to warm everything up. There's so much gearbox fluid. and everything else. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. so I much imagine. oil in it. It yeah. takes forever to warm it up. Yeah. Um, and when it's cold. Well, they're they're both kind of clunky when they're yeah. cold. Honestly, yeah. you really have but to. Even my nine eleven was clunky when it's cold. Yeah, my nine eleven was clunky when it's cold yeah. too. Um, but um, they're more similar than they are different. Interesting, for okay. sure. Yeah. So let me ask you this: the steering is better in the Countach. The uh, the Countach is fifteens. Fifteens. Okay, but the three... Ferrari is sixteens. But the Countach is running at. Isn't it a two twenty five in the front, like a three? It's a two twenty five or three forty five. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. That's absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah. So, what would you? There's nothing like the Countach. No, but like, I, I mean, can't the, imagine it would be. If you ever drove a five twelve Boxer Ferrari, that I have. That that would probably be about as close, close as, as you'd get. from a driving experience. Yeah. That's about as close as you'd get. Okay, but the Boxer's a little more like. Trucky, like does the boxer feel more mechanical than the Countach? No, but the flat engine is less satisfying than the V12 engine. Okay, like the same with the Testarossa. Like yeah. I don't find the that engine to be as satisfying as did, the V12. Did you like the Testarossa when you drove it? I like it. I'm not that enamored with it. So what would you? Because like I said, I'm always looking at stuff. I'm always looking at stuff, and like, like yeah, I'm I'm kind of like like my neighbor. But literally the next house over. He's got a, a 355 Cabrio. Oh, really? With a manual. Uh huh. Beautiful car. Yeah, they're lovely. Seventeen thousand miles. Oh, they're very, they're 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 fucking great. It never moves. 
That's a, that's a shame. It never moves. And I'm like, make him an offer before he realizes what it's worth. I always, I, I made him like five offers on the car. He's like, no, I'm going to keep it. I'm like, God damn, Steven. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to, I, I keep. That's looking. about as good an experience as available from any car at any price. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. A 355 six speed yeah. is the shit. Really? Yeah. Would you get the coupe or the drop top? I'd get the GTS. Yeah. With the removable center section. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if you wanted to get almost all the way there, like pretty close, yeah. I'd get a 94 348 GTS. So are they are they good? The yeah. Because everybody yeah. everybody like is, everybody constantly says the 348 is a shitbox. 91s and 92s, yeah. Then Luca went to Ferrari. And whipped everybody into shape and said, this car sucks. And they did a whole bunch of shit, changed it. And that's when they went from 348TB to yeah. GTB yeah. and different TS car. to GTS. Yeah, different car. What are they Very run- close to a 355 underneath. What are they running now? Are they in the 80s, 90s, or they, have they bumped over them? A that? great GTB or GTS. And they, the Spiders are 94 only. A great GTB or GTS is probably like 75, 80. That's not... Yeah. People awesome. they haven't hit yet, but they will because they're would, great. They're I would fun buy one fun. of that. Yeah, they're, they're really one, cool. They sound awesome. Buy one of those. Yeah, they sound awesome and they're really cool. And I've I have a video with one with a spider. Do you? Yeah, I, I, drove nice. I have to watch it. Okay. It was a fucking Turo rental. Oh, is that the one you do with that? Yeah, it was and a it was Turo manual? rental. Yeah, it had a bunch of miles on it and it ran like a champ. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> It was another a, one of many examples of Ferraris with a bunch of miles yeah. on them tend to run really good. I, I would do that. Would yeah. I fit in that car? Did that, well, Thad, Thad did. If he fit, then I'll yeah, fit. Yeah, Thad did. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they're very good. Yeah. They, they're they very, very nice. I'm looking for the next thing, and I don't know what it is. That could be it. Yeah, it could be, actually. That could be well, it. Well, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should Toro one. Fuck. Toro? Do you pronounce it Toro? I did pronounce it Toro. Intentionally? Apparently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to blame. <laughs> uh, that's a, that is a reference. Uh, um, yeah, that's fucking great. No, you should you should try one. Yeah, I yeah, like. I think nice. I like to. Um, but but you want the later ones? Okay. Yeah, I forget if it's ninety three and ninety four or just ninety four. Okay. But it's you want when they went to GTB and GTS. That's when you I wouldn't mind them. getting into it like like I did with the the nine nine six like before they pop. I mean, it's it's not going to be long. I, I know. I would make a move soon. Yeah, I know. Uh, we got a bunch of questions from Patreon. Yeah, not too many, about thirteen questions from Patreon. Uh, of course, patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast. You can become a patron, ask us questions for these shows, as well as uh, get the show immediately after it uh, ends, not have to wait. A whole bunch of privileges mm-hmm. you get by being a patron. Uh, Chappie says, What muscle car cannot be unshitboxed? Wow, that's a, I mean. It's a tough question because muscle cars are. Muscle cars are all shitboxes. Yeah. I hate to say that, but th- I mean. But you could spend uh, like. Can't be on shitbox. Yeah, like impossible. Is there a car that, by its very nature, could not be on shitboxed? I mean, like, like, is it harder? Like, like you know, the Charger. It's like unibody versus a body on frame car. No, I would mean, that be harder. Like, with enough money. Yeah. Like we talked about, you could make anything almost good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I you mean, know? with enough money, like like I drove some Detroit Speed in house builds. Yeah. And like. They're like, they're really, really fucking. Perfect good. example. You drove the the Ring Brothers Pantera, right? And you drove a stock Pantera. The stock one was way better. There you go. Yeah, the stock yeah. one. So was that way that's better. the a million dollar car versus a sixty thousand dollar car. Right, but 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 I think the problem with that is that the Pantera was. the The problem is they've been shitboxed. Like the yes. problem is like people think the Pantera needs to be a hot rod muscle car, yeah. but in fact it's better kind of left alone. Right. Um, and in fact, the guy whose Pantera that was in the video, he yeah. just bought it back. He had sold it oh, a really? couple years ago and he just bought it back. Okay. Um, I mean, maybe maybe a Maverick, sure. you know, which isn't even a muscle car per se. I mean, I'm going to get people being like, you know what you're talking about? I don't know, something like that. A Gremlin, which is just a ship, a Falcon. Right. Yeah. Like, er- everything could be approved upon, but nothing is going to be great. Right. So, I, mean, that, that, I think that it goes back to our original question: is you could spend a hundred grand and end up with something that's okay. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, 
Just and I mean that. that's like even some of the really nice muscle cars I've driven. Yeah, they've had a lot of like sacrifice. You know what I mean? They're not refined. You know what I mean? Mo- most of the even the super high dollar modified ones that I've driven are just as good or almost as good as an S one ninety seven Mustang GT. Right. There right. you go. Right. Uh, Tom Russell from Australia. Um, could you explain to an Aussie what the deal is with rollout when doing a zero to sixty time? I don't get it. I thought using the car's launch control would give you the best time. Well, Tom, rollout isn't something you do differently with the car. It's right. just a different method of measuring it. You're right that using a launch control or you know just dumping the clutch from fucking five grand or whatever yeah. is the best way. Mm-hmm. But there's two different ways to measure it, which you want to get into that? With the, the yeah, I mean, if, if so much zero to 60 time, especially, you know, from a dead stop has to do with tires and traction and temperature and everything else. You can, you can launch a car from a dead stop 10 times and get 10 different times, right? It all depends on, on who's driving and all these different factors where a rollout is, I think, a more accurate measure because the car is already in motion and it will keep the back tires for the most part or if it's an all-wheel drive car from breaking loose or spinning and i think you'll get much more uh, accurate results if you do it that way so whether it's from a dead stop to 60 or say five miles an hour 260 with a rollout again you're getting a much a much more accurate depiction of what the speed really is right um and tomorrow not tomorrow wednesday i'll be with uh, jason camisa who really has some thoughts on oh yes drag launching cars mm. which he's shared with us in many previous shows if tom if you want to go back and listen to um i don't want to say it was the last jason camisa show because we did that one virtually but it, i think it was the show before that the last time he was in studio he went into great detail about why um you at home will never be able to replicate the magazine numbers because you are not capable of beating on your own car the way that we are (laughs) you're capable of beating on press cars we beat on press cars like they owe us money so yeah yeah Yeah. Um, Hunter Sands uh, wants to know what are your thoughts on the speed core mid engine charger build will this finally turn uh, a vintage muscle car into something that can go around corners. Well, first off, Hunter, I think various I mean, builders have proven I that mean, muscle cars can go around corners. It's not without compromise maybe in some yeah. other areas, but guys like uh, Meyer and... Oh, uh, there are loads. I mean, my 68 I mean, Charger. Yeah. I've raced in look one at, lap of America. Yeah, with Mir- Jim Miro. I mean, look at, oh, look at any, any Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. Yeah. And you'll see muscle cars going around corners Very with quickly. the engines in the front. That's right. They don't <laughs> yeah. need to move the they place with move the engine. Um, and I, I like what speed... Co- well, I shouldn't say that. I'm not a fan of that car. I think it's cool. You're, this is the car that was in Fast and Furious. Yeah, I think it's interesting. It's, it's, I like They the took concept. a Charger. They put the fucking engine it, behind yeah. the driver. It's fine. I'm I, again. I'm so biased towards Chargers because I think it's the most beautiful muscle car ever made. I I hate when people flub the lines of that car. And did I, they change the outside told, body of it? They changed the the fenders. Did they they change the lines of it. Yeah, it's I mean, similar. But when you really start looking at them, I, I just think it's such a pure shape, and I just hate when they're. It's the sixty eights in particular. Um, I think it's cool. Oh yeah, it is definitely a yeah. bit of a different shape. I think it's cool. I, it doesn't appeal to me, but I, I, I absolutely applaud the engineering and what the car can do. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I saw this car at SEMA. Yeah. And, um, you know, seeing that engine back there. Oh, it's, it's cool. Is pretty fucking wild. Yeah. Um, and I I like it better when, like I've seen other some other folks, when they, when they really move the engine far back in the front Correct. to where it's a front mid, yeah. and then they move the f- driver's seat to like where the back yeah, seat exactly. was. Yeah, exactly. That's a different ballgame. Yeah, I forget who did it with the Fox body yeah. a couple years ago, but it was fucking yeah. incredible. I like that a little better. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't... And I don't know, in terms of engineering, I don't know if, that, if what they've done here actually does improve it. You know what I, I mean? The, like, if a car is designed from the ground up to be a certain way... And you move that lump of metal somewhere well, else. Does that actually help? Well, I mean, the other part is there's no charger in that charger. There's no there's no charger. It's in a tube frame car. It's a, yeah. It's a hundred percent bespoke chassis and yeah. everything else. So 
You can't really compare. It's not a one to one. No. And the other part is, I have never seen a test of that card because the test has never been done. Yeah. With all these builders and all the the pro touring cars that I've driven in my lifetime and over the years, you know, some are good, but most are still pretty shitty. And the reason is that a lot of these guys, while they're engineers, um, and I, this sounds so terrible, they don't really know what good is. No, I know what you mean. You know? I've been, I've I've met a lot of folks there where. Um, sometimes I can be really impressed. Yeah. And sometimes, like like. People that have never driven a great sports car. Right. They've never driven a Corvette ZR1 or an right. Acura NSX right. or a Boxster, you know, right. to know what really good, good is. Yeah. And so, like, I remember one dude, I drove this, like, 75 Toyota Corolla yeah. that had a supercharged 1UZ and wide fenders. And he did really well. I, I'm, the guy's name is escaping me right now, but he did, and he did well at Optima. Yeah. And I was like, what other cars have you driven? And this guy's right. like, none. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Right. Like, you built this having no idea what that good well. is. And other people, same situation, no yeah. idea what good is. It seems like what they've done should work, but the fine-tuning is like a fucking disaster, yeah. and it actually doesn't work. And it's like, oh, you've never actually driven good. something good, and right. you don't have a benchmark. That's yeah. right. I mean, even... So, th- just go out and drive a Porsche Boxster. That's what I'm saying. Perfect. Perfect example of a good car. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but Hunter, go go look at some Optima Ultimate Streetcar yeah. Invitational videos. You'll see a lot of muscle cars that go around corners. Yeah. Uh, Richard Wakefield, uh, what are your thoughts on Hyundai shutting down their internal combustion engine research division? Um, listen, it's coming. We all know that it's coming. All Everything's going to be EV in the next 20 years. You know, I'm... I'm well, I think we're fortunate. My generation, mass generation, we're fortunate because we've lived through carburation, fuel injection, hybrids, all the way up to EVs. And we've been able to experience that from what they were like when they were new. And I think that's a big thing where I think generations of kids that are born today are never going to know anything but EVs. And that, not that there's anything wrong with that because it's technology and it's evolution. Um, you know, my my only concern with EVs, and I... And I I just don't know enough about the subject to say I still I'm I'm fearful for what the long term ramifications on the environment are sure. of of the mining for the lithium for the batteries. We're outsourcing our filth. Exactly. And that that's a big concern. Yeah. Um, my other concern is that will this technology be sustainable for long term? Meaning, you know, I have cars that are fifty years old. Can you keep an EV on the road for fifty years? No. Right. And so where <laughs> does not. where does all that that computer, that battery, everything that goes into that, where does that end up and can you recycle it? And, you know, I think it's any environmentalist is going to have the same questions and we just don't know. But I think that people are under this um, false notion that it's a very, very clean, you know, a clean solution. But in the same thing, where does electricity come from? Right. Well, there's, I mean, depends on where you are in the country, right? right? In certain places, it comes I mean, from clean sources. Sure. In certain places, it comes from very dirty sources. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's no question that electric cars will re- increase or improve air quality in dense cities. Absolutely. Having said that, um, the, the, st- the nose-to-tail process of building a car, yeah. shipping it where it needs to go, mm-hmm. shipping the parts where they need to go, shipping it where it needs to go, yep. using it over its whole life and disposing it when it's done. And I, I, it's hard to tell. It's hard to get the truth, you know, because there's so much information right. conflicting. People have agendas. And I'd like to know the truth, but it's hard to know. It's hard. What I believe, based on what I've read, yeah. is that over its whole life, a very efficient gasoline powered car or pot with a possibly with a small hybrid battery mm-hmm. as pack is a much more environmentally friendly thing yeah certainly than the EV Hummer oh god gotcha. <laughs> yeah you know yeah. or yeah. or or one of these giant you know electric trucks truck pickup trucks yeah um and i i i think there's a lot of problems with outsourcing our filth yeah. to other countries yeah um so and I and I 
I don't think it's been determined yet. Oh, no, it's that, still too new. That EVs are going to save us all. No. We're at that point in battery technology right now where, like, magic needs to happen for us to get That's to correct. the next stage. That's correct. We're fucking packing laptop batteries into these cars. Right. <laughs> we are. We're pa- a Tesla battery pack is a, yeah. a fucking couple thousand laptop batteries yeah. shoved together. Right. You know, and we're finding ways to make these batteries more efficient. Yep. They've got... The new 900 volt architecture, like Lucid has, mm-hmm. that allows you to charge and discharge faster. But, but ultimately, we're at the point where we need some battery magic to happen to get to the next level. Yeah. So, I think it is short sighted to stop developing. Oh, an efficient I, internal combustion. I agree. Engine. I think I, I and I agree with you in the sense where I think a hybrid, um, a small displacement yeah. hybrid, you know, gas engine with a hybrid, I think is the way to go. Yeah, and I can't imagine like, I you know, the question is that. Hyundai shutting down their research division uh, for internal combustion. That doesn't necessarily mean there won't be individual That's correct. researchers. It's just, really, they might be dispersing them to other parts Hyundai of the company. Hyundai doesn't just produce cars. Right. That's true. Um, you see, I am cannot pronounce your name. And <laughs> I can't. But you see. Uh, Mike, what do you think about muscle cars such as the Camaro... Oh, wait. Hang on a second. Oh, whoa. Oh, sorry. I got confused. I got two two separate questions sure. here about muscle cars. One, uh, what do you think about muscle cars such as the Camaro, Mustang, and Challenger being EV in the near future? Uh, will the gasoline-powered versions of these cars become collectible? Uh, that's the first that's one. Far. So the short answer to that is yes. I think that... Right now, if you look at the muscle cars, and I, and I say this like Mustang, Mustang and Camaro in particular, they have been they've morphed into sports cars, not muscle. That's cars. actually the next question. Oh. It's about the difference, but so yeah, yeah. So Mustang and Camaro are now sports cars, they're not muscle cars anymore. Um, when you can go around a track as fast as a 911 or you know something of that caliber, they are that is a pure sports car. The Challengers and the Charger, those are still straight muscle cars. They're big, they're brawny, um, and they, they're only good at going. I mean, yes, they go around a corner, kind of, kind of, but that's not their purpose. Their purpose is exactly what every ad shows you. Tire smoke, power slides, donuts, theater. That's what those are. I personally, yes, I think that you, I would buy a wide-body Hellcat Challenger right now if you were to say what was collectible. That's going to be collectible. Sure. The demons, the red eyes, anything with that blown motor. Yeah. Wait 20 years. A low mileage one of those is, is going to be big, big money. In fact, I'm actually thinking of buying one because of that reason. Uh, and then the next question, um, Mustang and Camaro have lost their muscle car title in favor mm-hmm. of being called sports cars. That only leaves the Charger and Challenger. Mm-hmm. Why has this happened? Because I, I think part of it is... People started to realize that they do want to go around corners and that it's fun. Yeah. And the other portion of it is that GM and Ford have budgets that are ten times the size of what uh, FCA and now Stellantis has. So for for you know FCA, they had that platform that is now going on twenty five years old, which is insane mm-hmm. to say. But you can only do so much with that architecture, and as opposed to re engineering the car. To be a sports car, they had to use with what they had, and that's what that platform was good for. They could put gobs of power to it. It's not going to break. It'll take it. But it wasn't conducive to turning it into a sports yeah. car because it was simply too big. And the people who worked on the Camaro and the Mustang were tired of being sneered at by Europeans. No, no, there's no question about yeah. it. And here's the thing. Like, a ZL1 Camaro is a fabulous car on track. Yeah. A GT500 is a fabulous car on track. It was. It was The yeah. new GT500 was awesome on track. Yeah. Ripped. Uh, a Charger? A Challenger? Not so much. <laughs> yeah. And I've raced them on yeah, track. Yeah, I have a Not video so of, a, of a, a wide-body uh, red eye on track, and it was it's, it's, not great. It's big. 4,500 pounds, It's not great, man. especially the short wheelbase. Although the long wheelbase the cars, cars are better. fun for sliding. Yes. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah. Um, Miguel Flores wants to uh, say that he's got a new saying regarding new cars, giving it the musto treatment, intentionally scratching their new car so you don't have to worry about it. Like that. Anders uh, is weekend driving a 67 GTO with an Edelbrock manifold carb and headers along with four-wheel disc brakes. 
what handling upgrades can I do that won't break the bank? Very, you want, honestly, a, put a new set of shocks on it, put a new set of springs on it. Unless you're going to spend Boku money like Matt and I have spoken about in the past, it's always only going to be okay. But upgrade the shocks, upgrade the springs, upgrade your wheels and tires, okay, and, because that's going to make the, one of the biggest differences on the car, and leave it at that. Don't reinvent the wheel. Understand you have a wheel that is potentially a little flawed. Yeah. And drive it for what it is. Uh, what's in the... Robert says, what's in the Musto collection these days, and what car that you've sold would you most want back? Okay, one of the only cars that I've ever sold that I want back is my 1970 Chrysler Newport. And it's it's ridiculous that because really it's, it's just... Ridiculous. I, I loved it. I shouldn't have sold it, but I did. The cars that are currently in the collection, uh, 68 Charger, 69 Daytona, um, 79 BMW, 96 Ford Bronco, 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee, 90 Grand... The round one? The yeah. Jeep Grand Cherokee? Yeah. The round one? Yeah. 90... All the rich kids in my high school... That's what I got. But I got the cheapy one. I got the Laredo. Uh, yeah, they all got the limited. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, and then uh, the 2000... Oh, my... Yeah. Would I leave anything? The, the 911. The 996. Mm. Uh, Joe says, will Panteras ever go down in value again, or is this the cheapest they'll ever be? This is the cheapest they'll ever be. Except in like 30 years when people who like 70s cars start dying. Yeah, that'll be me. Yeah. That'd be me. That'd be 30 I mean, years. Panteras are, they've never really like hit hit. I mean, Panteras are cool. They're up a little bit from where they once were, yeah. but they're never, they've never like hit the way that like a, the, the, the way that 80s Ferraris hit or no, Countach hit. It's because they were that mishmash. Yeah. You know, they were, they were the mishmash. Did and, you? and they've, um, you know, I think. If you ever, if you think you might want one, like the good news is, they're probably not gonna hit. No, people aren't gonna all of a sudden in five or ten years yeah. decide that Pantera is the one should be twice as valuable yeah. as they are. Yeah. The, you know, the great ones, the pre L's, yeah. perfectly restored low mile. Those are gonna be big dollars, but like. There's other like less desirable ones or ones 60, that have been like forty to sixty grand modified. You can get a nice car. Yeah. And and again, remember, it's a the weakest part of that car is the transaxle in the back. But the motors, you know, 351s can be made stout. You could do a lot of stuff to those cars. And they're nice, but the dash is wonky. Right. It's a little weird. Um two more. Uh Mike uh Dan B says, Mike, what muscle cars or any cars for that matter are the best platforms for an EV resto mod? With uh, EV crate engines looking like they'll be popular options for swaps in the near future. Honestly, I, I mean, I, I really don't subscribe to that when it comes to a muscle car. I think that muscle cars are muscle cars for a reason. I, I don't subscribe to the... I like the idea of e-muscle in a new car. I really have a problem with pulling your big block out and putting an, an EV motor in it because it just takes the heart and soul out of the car. I think if you want to do that to a, a sports car, I think that's fine. But muscle cars were... Muscle cars for the reason that when you start them, everything vibrates and shakes, and it's the noise and it's the experience. Not to say that they were all that fast, but to answer your question, any you can do it to any one. I personally do not think it enhances them aside from making them more efficient and faster. Yeah, I mean, if you want to build a pure drag car, like sure. literally a quarter mile oh, car, go ahead. You can end up with a pretty low maintenance, in theory. Oh, yeah. You know, efficient, big, sure, yeah. very powerful drag I mean, like what they did with the, the Mustang, the, the right. Mach 1400 that runs yeah. whatever. Um, but the problem with EVs, to me, is that if you look at brand new EVs, yeah. they have to, <laughs> or specifically compared, like, wait, let me rephrase this. The, the rumbling of a big muscle car engine yeah. overshadows all the rattles and creaks Absolutely. and weird sounds that a 40-year-old or 50-year-old or 60-year-old muscle car would make. Mm -hmm. To get rid of that, of that <laughs> the amount of unshitboxing you have to do it's so hard. is going to be astounding. Yeah. Um, AI design in Tuckahoe mm -hmm. 
did this Willie's Jeep, and the amount of unshit boxing it takes to to have an EV Willie's Jeep that yeah. doesn't feel like a complete steaming hunk of shit. Yeah. Um, you know, I've only ever I've seen them at SEMA, yeah. sitting still. <laughs> yes, yeah, right, right. And I've seen them done by really, really high end people mm-hmm. like E V West mm-hmm. and Jonathan Ward right, at Icon. Icon. Sure. And 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 actually one of the one of the things that um Jonathan Ward talked about was A getting rid of all the old car rattles now that you don't hear an engine mm-hmm. anymore. Um and he's talking about, by the way, uh, a fucking um uh, uh a giant like a Cadillac. He's not talking about a a a, a not well made. He's talking about a car that was like really well made for the day. Yeah, yeah. And 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 uh, John Ward at Icon or EV West or or um, really really high end builders yeah. have been able to get it done. And like you said, to end up with something that's <laughs> okay, almost, yeah, almost okay, it's almost good, <laughs> right? Um, and so although the idea cerebrally of an EV muscle car is good. I think that what could be cool is like a, like I've said this before, like a 59 Caddy. Sure. that That's not it's supposed, supposed to, to be. Yeah, you find a 59 no Caddy question. with a blown engine and a great body. Yeah. Put a small EV yeah. in there. You could have a huge fucking battery right. pack or restoring an old Rolls Royce, restoring a classic luxury cruiser no question about that like where, i could yeah. see doing an ev in like a 65 riviera where the engine itself it, doesn't make the experience that's that's right yeah i know that you know holly had an event up at uh sonoma raceway and they had yeah. it's called high voltage or whatever the yeah. it was and behind me there was we were literally standing at the paddock where the autocross was going on there were a bunch of modified evs my biggest problem was you could see them but you couldn't hear them and as soon as i turned my back I could ignore them. Yeah. And that was the biggest problem. Um, well, that's why kind of like why Formula E sort of sucks. It's boring as fuck. Yeah. It's just, it's just boring. If yeah. I turn around and I can't hear anything, I'm like, eh. I'm a fan of using EV for like what it excels at. Right. And and then, you know, leaving the rest. Yeah. I, I like I really like your idea of of an old school well, cruiser. EV, of cruiser. Yeah. Cadillacs, Lincolns. Like I could see a 65 Lincoln. Like yeah. A Conti, an EV. Yeah. That'd be Spectacular. You know, if you had, if you, it wouldn't need a ton of power. No. You know what I mean? Where are you going? And, it, and it, it's heavy, so the batteries, who gives a shit? That's right. You know, you don't need to, you're not going to go that far. No. Yeah. You're just cruising around town, yeah. so, just, you know, Dude, plug it into your house. Like, that I would do. That seems cool, right? Yeah. And, and, and being quiet it's fine. is fine. Because you just pimp it. Because that engine was supposed to be quiet to begin with. That's no right. No one gives a shit about that. That's right. I don't even know what kind of engine's in that fucking thing. <laughs> I don't care. You know? I, I agree with you 100% on that. Uh, lastly, Dante wants me to know that Arctic trucks are coming to North America in 2022. Oh, oh you're talking like the big the Icelandic, ass Icelandic, the Icelandic cool. trucks? Yeah, I don't know. What they're I'm doing, doing an F-150, cool. um, and possibly a Toyota product as well. It says an Arctic trucks like dot retail dot dot US available in North America fall of 2022. For a long time, I've been like, how the fuck has nobody figured out that these things would would make all kinds of money in North America. But what, what do we do with them? Where do you use them? Habibi. They're just driving these shits around Texas. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just People buy six by sixes yeah, to go no, to the fucking true. Beverly Center. You yeah, know? That's true. What do you okay. do with them? I mean, you drive in the sand. Yeah. Desert, yeah. Pismo, dunes. Yeah. Okay. You know, maybe it's Colorado mountaining or whatever. But what do you do? You flash your fucking cash. They yeah, look, exactly. They look cool. This is my thing. That's it. Well, that's our show, folks. That was great. Mike Musto, Hemmings. Uh, you know, all the socials will be in the Yeah, we've show. got, yeah, if you ever want to, we have a, if I could pimp the podcast, we've got a Hemmings Hot Rod Barbecue podcast that Matt has been a guest on multiple times. Um, and we've got some great video stuff. We've got another, uh, or, um, uh, another series of Road to Improvement coming out, which was the show where we take a vehicle, upgrade it along the way on our road trip around the United States. That was good. And uh, we are doing, as last year we did a big 4x4 Suburban. This year we are doing something from the 1980s, and we're, it is a muscle car that we're going to make handle. What happened to the Suburban? Sold. Oh, it did? We sold it for charity with SEMA Cares. Oh, cool. So 100% what, of the proceeds. What did you get for it? Uh, $21,000. Nice. And 100% of the proceeds went to help the kids for SEMA Care. so we're cool. pretty proud of that. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that is our show. Thank you to our Patreon uh, patrons for submitting questions. Uh, I'll be back next show uh, from Jason Camisa's house. 
uh, two days from now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm on a road trip scouting the roads for the Road and Track Route to Vine Rally. Um, if you're interested in doing that, you can go to roadandtrack.com. I think it's, I want to say it's slash experiences. Uh, let me look, com slash experience. Is it experiences? That might be wrong. Yes, it is. <laughs> Road and Track. No, no, it's right. It's right? Yeah, roadandtrack.com slash experiences. Uh, the event is in March I am not only making the route, I'm leading it. Oh. Um, there are automotive celebrities that are involved, racing drivers, wow. exclusive um, track time at Sonoma, very, very high-end hotels, and you do not need a supercar or anything to do it, just anything you want to do. I, I will say this, as somebody who's known Matt for the better part of almost 15 years, I can tell you when Matt plans a rally. If I make a route, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Don't think, sign up yeah, and go. So tomorrow I'm going to be, route. today was drive to San Francisco day, tomorrow's route scouting day. Cool. All right, that's our show. See you next time. Goodbye.